Yes, yes, you're back with Live Hip Hop Daily. Of course, it's the one-on-one segment with the coach. Today's special guest, Chi Ali in the place, man. In case you just joined us. But man, let's um let's let's continue to speak about some of that um the music making process a little bit. Um what I want to ask is being that, you know, you've been in you've been around as a musician, as an artist, as an MC for a while. Right. Um as a younger person, you know, we were influenced, you know, by a certain level of artists. There was a certain way we went about doing the music lyrically lyrically and putting the music together. So today, when you go into the studio today, um, what challenges do you face as far as marrying your past and, you know, those influences with the sounds that are popular today? Or is there any pressure on you at all? I mean, I think I think it's more pressure I put on myself only because I look at myself as an artist that, although I've been around a while, being that I was away so long, a lot of the younger generation know the name, but they really don't know the music. Okay. So I feel like because of that and because hip-hop is a, is a field that I could probably capitalize off of my situation, I feel like I want to make music that's relevant to the young people, while at the same time, I don't want the older heads to look at it like, oh, he on some, some new school shit. So that means... That makes it a, a little bit of pressure but i think most of that pressure is on me because at the end of the day no matter what i do they can't take old school from me because that's where i'm from like right. that's where i came from I, i've been around I, I, done, I done did it so my whole thing is being a new york mc i'm always going to take pride in what i say and and try to write rhymes and that 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 is not only say what i get to the point of what i'm trying to say but or, or, or witty and clever and you know just got that that new york funk to it but at the same time, the hard part becomes picking the the, the track selection mm. because I think that's really where the different the difference in today's generation from you know the golden era generation lies. Where if you take a premiere or a ninth wonder or some of the producers from back in the day, they probably not really into the sound of today's music mm. it came from more sampling and and taking time where nowadays beats you know are done on machines and i done seen dudes do hot beats today that they'll do in 10 15 minutes right so it's a it's a i'm not gonna say it, it's a lot less work but i don't think it takes it, it, it still takes a, a certain ear and talent to do it so I, I mean i respect what everybody's doing because at the end of the day you cannot knock somebody because they was born in 89 or 91 right, right. versus 69 or 75 right. Right? it's like it's not your fault where you was born or if you from alabama you can't control where your mama had you right so right we can't <laughs> we you know what i'm saying but a lot of people are like oh them country nigga. motherfucker can't control where they from at the right. end of the day that's where they was born at so that's the the music and the culture that they're going to take on when you you got a lot of MCs, especially from New York, that's not into the down south music. And I get it. I, I, I truly get it. But at the same time, when you listen to a T.I. or Two Chains and whatnot, they may make more trap music or strip club music. But if you've been in Atlanta, that's been the culture down there for years where right. the strip clubs is popping up here now. But that been popping down there for years. So Word. that's basically their culture. They're doing what they know. They're not... I don't think they're being fake to hip-hop. They're being real to what they know. Right. So I don't feel it's fair for us to knock them for that. Um, as far as the lyrical content, that's where it gets a little crazy for me. Because just I'm someone who takes pride in what I say. And that's why I love MCs like Fab so much. Because Fab, even when he gets on a track that has that down south feel... He's still kicking, so he's right, still flipping right, it. Right. And you like, ah, he's saying some shit, but you got to really listen to what he's saying. And he's still getting crazy with it. Whereas a lot of the MCs from down there, in my opinion, don't get as crazy lyrically with it. Right. And that's what I'd like to see a lot more. And that's why I really do respect artists like Ludacris. Because I feel like Luda is one of the few dudes from down, down bottom that is dead nice. And I don't think he really gets credit for how nice he really is. So... And you said a lot with that, man, because I wonder when we talk about some of the art. And for the record, there's, you know, I lived in the South for a couple of years, right. man, and there's still a lot of music that I can't get with. And I know people from the South can't get with it either. You know, you know, let's, you know, sometimes when we talk about the South, it, you know, we have to remember it's not all the same. There's people in the South that want lyricism. Right, you know, definitely. When, ability, you know, when, you know I was, when I was just, I was just with Knife Wonder. He, Knife is from North Carolina. Right. He's got his studio, and he's got his team of producers and artists down there. I mean, this is North Carolina, and they on some hip hop shit. <laughs> straight <laughs> off, straight like, up. They on some hip hop shit. Um, 
I mean, and they making beats that straight up hip hop beats. His artist is straight up spitting hip hop rhymes. Where I'm talking about MCs. Word. Where they, I know they right there, and they look at a lot of these motherfuckers like, eh. But so, so it's definitely you got your your your, your people that's into the culture everywhere. That's right. You know what I mean? But I don't knock those who's doing what they do, especially if they eating, because at the end of the day, it's about feeding your family. And I listen to a two chains because my my daughters love them, man. Right. And, and and whatnot. So it helps me keep an open ear just from having to listen to it <laughs> or, or being just bashed out while we in the car. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but you know, you it's certain joints that I do fuck with, and and and, and son is I like I fucks with son. Just right. my, like I said, my daughters love him, and I fuck with son. And it's crazy because some of the shit he say, like I just laugh, like yeah, that shit is crazy. Like <laughs> like if I said some shit like that, niggas be like, "Gee, I'll eat good." Oh, he's finished. <laughs> <laughs> he went to jail, man. Oh, no. <laughs> the boy is washed up. But it, I mean, it's just it's just different. It's just different, but. But um, like he said, I'm different. Yeah, he is different. But I'm learning to respect and just and get get enjoyment out of everything. And that, right. that, that's the whole thing. At the end of the day, it's entertainment. Right. And you you just gotta you gotta enjoy it. You gotta try to I try to look for what I like about it versus right. uh, versus just being negative about it. And I know a lot of the purists, a lot of the dudes from up here, be like, ah, fuck that shit. Yeah. But that's just me. That's where I'm at with it. Like I said, I was a long, way a long time, so. I just be so much focused on not trying to be bitter and just seeing the, the good aspects of life that that's where I'm at with it. Understood, understood. And um, you mentioned um, earlier about um, coming out, you know, with Drez and Black Sheep. Right. Um, do you still maintain um, any contact or relations with the members of Native Tongue? Um, yeah, I mean, with Drez and I, we like family. I mean, we I was up? with them. I spoke to his moms earlier. <laughs> um, so that, that's like family. As far as Long from Black Sheep, me and Long spoke a few times since I've been home. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if he's in Florida or Cali. I'm not sure where, where he's at. We haven't actually bumped heads since he's been home, but Long kind of kind of been on some loner shit. To my, to, as far as I can see, since I've been home, I know him and Drez have their differences. Right. But my thing is, I'm cool with with both of them. You right. Know, it's all love. They brought me up in this thing here. Right. So it's all love from from my aspect. Um, I done chilled with Tip and Ali and Fife at you know different places and Daylight. I mean, it's as far as I go, it's love from everyone. The only one I think I haven't seen is La. I, okay. I haven't seen Daylight, but I spoke to them a few times. I haven't yeah. seen Queen Latifah. Since I've been home and we haven't spoke, but you know she's doing the TV show. Right, La, she's out there. Lies on another level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, like back hope she ain't get to <laughs> Shoot, who? Who's that? I don't know. Nah, but I don't Tell him I ain't here. I, I heard you in the background. I, 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 I hope Lie would never be on it like that. <laughs> I don't think she would, but Lie's probably the only one I haven't seen. But every, right. everyone else that I've seen from Leaders, Buster, Every everybody, it's just love. Even with most of the new artists, it's right. love. Though I mean, the only artists I may not get love from is artists that really don't know me. So I don't think it's any disrespect. They just they don't know me. Right. If I don't know you. I can't be mad at you for not saying what's yeah, up yeah. or whatnot. We don't know each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's but, um, but it's it's been love. It's, like I said, I'm blessed to be in hip hop because, like I said, this is one feel that I can really. <clears throat> still eat and even capitalize off what happened where if I was a postman or a lawyer, you know, catching a case and what nothing doing all that time would have basically blackballed me from right. from that that industry or whatever it is I was doing. So I'm blessed to be in hip hop and I'm blessed to, you know, still have that, that drive to keep wanting to do it and to just be embraced by so many individuals of high stature in, in, in my field, man. That's what's up, man. And, and having mentioned Latifah, let me just say that it reminds me of Flavor Unit. I just want to give a shout out to uh, Mark, the 45 King. Yeah, big he shout out to Mark. He suffered a heart attack about wow, 40, I didn't even know that. About 40, 48 hours ago, maybe, okay. two, well, maybe you know, a day and a half, two and a half days Much ago. love and prayers go out to DJ Mark, the 45 yes, King. Sir. Everybody send your prayers to him and his family. And big shouts to La, Shaq, and the whole Flavor Unit. Word. Or Dana, shouts to Tretch and Naughty. I was with them and KG, seen all of them the night. It was just love, man. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that, man, because, you know, hell. they publicize the differences. Like we know, groups have had their differences through the years. And, you know, having said that, I mean, a lot of us got into the industry as younger people, teenagers. Let's right. not forget. Right. There's a growing process just as regular people where you grow and you change and you mature. And, yeah, and then, and then the, the, the money, the money plays a big part of mm. it. And a lot of it comes from mm. us not coming up with it so when we get it everybody 
you know, goes on different lanes with it and everyone's right. different with it and how they deal with it. And then when it gets to a point where people have it and then lose it or, or spend it or, yeah. or don't have it anymore. And then you got some members of the group who may do other things and they still have it. So it becomes sometimes a situation of maybe entitlement or what have yeah. you. But, you know, everybody at some point, everybody's got to be their own man. But then and then you also have so many outside influences, whereas, uh, well, you don't need him. You're the main part of the group anyway. Anyway, mm. and it's bad that 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 we get um we get our minds get sabotaged by things of that nature. But everybody's human. Like when I look, I look at Rockefeller, I look at Jay, Damon, mm. Biggs, and I just look at it like, yo, them dudes made so much bread together. But I know at the same time, it probably was people in Jay's ear for years. Like, right. Yo, you don't need these dudes. You right. don't need these dudes. Right. But I don't think it it was him thinking he don't need them. I think it was more just people grow. And develop and go different ways and 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 you gotta I guess you you live and learn but um I mean I think it's peace that when when the group the groups that do stay together for years and still have that love I think that shit is just a beautiful thing and I think it's sad that so many of the older school groups have to come together for financial reasons mm. but maybe them coming together for financial reasons can help mend the differences and help exactly. see that a lot of differences was bullshit anyway. It was. You know, y'all made classic shit that stands in hip hop and in music forever that can never go away. You know what I mean? When I look at EPMD and I heard for years, oh, they don't fuck with each other. Right. Or even like with Dres and Long, now they don't fuck with each other. I'm like, yo, like to me, it seems minute, although I'm not, I'm on the outside looking in, so right. it's much easier to say. But I just look at it like we should be able to move past these differences for y'all did something that cannot be removed from history. You know what I mean? So. I mean, it, it just it fucks me up, but I always yeah. been a solo artist, so I guess it's a lot it's of shit. I don't gotta deal with those headaches. <laughs> and I mean, Word. we're going through our generation, we going through it as, you know, in hip hop, and the generations before us went through it too, because there's groups from the previous generations don't have anything to do with hip hop per se. You know, R and B soul groups that, for whatever reasons, and you name some good ones, the financial ones, you know, the financial reasons, um, the, the the label execs, or certain other third parties whispering in people's ear, Absolutely. yo, it really needs to be you instead of you and these four people. You know, these are some of the things that we need to, to watch, uh, you know, guard ourselves against as we move through these corporations. But it's definitely nothing new under the sun because we saw it in the generation before us. Where you had certain groups that came in these games together, you know, soul groups, and then after a while, this one is fighting with this one, this one done broke up, and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, hopefully we learn something. Right. I mean, I, like I said, I, at the end of the day, I think it becomes very hard when we come from situations where everyone's fucked up. So right. it's just everybody's just grabbing for that dollar. But when, when it's a situation where everybody's all right, then we can really make the decision that we want to make. And uh, outside, you telling me, yo, G, I give you this, really can't affect me if I'm already financially situated. Exactly. But if I'm popped and I got two daughters to feed and rent or do on the first and I don't know I don't have it, <laughs> Then it's easier for for you to get in my ear. Well, listen, if you leave him, I could do this and that. For you. Right, right. It's much easier to to be influenced because I'm in a situation where my back is up against the wall. Mm. True, true. That's true. Um, let me let me jump to this for a minute. Um, a couple of times you mentioned your your daughters. Obviously, you're a parent. Um, I have a daughter as well. With parents around here too. And one of the things I'm always curious about is. Um, you know, do you navigate or do you try to, you know, watch what your daughters listen to as far as hip hop music? Me, absolutely not. Right. Um, I got two daughters. I got a three year old and a fifteen year old. I didn't come up like that. Um, like I wasn't at my parents. I, I mean, I'm blessed to have both of my parents still alive and still That's together. Sure. And I came up in a household where. From Richard Pryor to Eddie Murphy, no, <laughs> nothing was really um, <laughs> all off limits for me. So, and and I don't feel like I curse a whole bunch, so I don't think that had a bad influence on me. Right. As far as as far as rap goes, that's that's my feel. It's different forms of rap. I want my daughter to hear everything from N.W.A. to Erica Badu to to whoever the common. Right. Whoever. You decide what you like. Um, at the end of the day, it's my job to be a parent and to teach you right from wrong and I'm still I feel like I'm very lenient because at the end of the day I feel like you can teach kids right from wrong but once they get to them teenage years you're not going to be with them to hold their hand every step of the way it's true at the end of the day 
I got shit to do, right? My daughter was getting out of school at the time. We got to do this interview today. Right. So it's days she's going to be walking home by herself. So she's she knows right from wrong, and she knows his consequences to all her actions, and she's got to live with the results of the, uh, of the decision she make. So that's on her. At the end of the day, you got to live your life. Like I might be mad about a decision you make, but, but you got to live with it. Whether right. it's a boyfriend or a girlfriend, whatever it is, you got to wake up to that motherfucker in the morning. Right. So make sure you happy. I'm here for you. And you know right from wrong. That's right. And and you know I'm, I'm I just try to try to do my best. A lot of it too with me being lenient is because I was away so long. I don't want to come back 12, 13 years later. Like oh no, it's going like this, like that. Right, like, right. Because you know you don't want motherfuckers to be looking at you like you wasn't even Since here. Since when? Yeah. And, and, you know what I mean? Like and and that's how these kids are. And at the end of the day, no matter how strict you try to be, once the kid is 15, 16. They're going to do some things that, that you're not going to be able to stop, that you may not like. And you could think, oh, not my kid, your kid, right, too. Right, Trust me, it'll have It happens to the best of That's them. Right. So you just got to teach them right from wrong and, and try to be a strong influence. And you don't, you got to let them know that you're not their friend, but we can be friendly, but I'm not your friend. Exactly. You know what I mean? But, I'm glad um, you said that. You know, it's, 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 it's not easy. But it's not no, I'm glad Especially you made that with last these phones. Point. Everything I tell my daughter, she like, uh huh. I heard your daddy. I'd be like, Are you listening? Yeah, give me that. Are you listening? That's my only. My daughter's thing. right hand is a phone. Like it's yeah, not she, even a no, hand. It's my, just my a brother, phone. My brother was here the other day. He was like, Yo, how your daughter? She sky asleep with the phone like this. She had this shit in the death grip. Yeah, like it's crazy. <laughs> But the it's phone, crazy. like that's when she get in trouble. Anything she do, all I could do is take the phone. Anything right. else, she don't care. That's all like, they care she about. Care. Is that she phone. be like, whatever. You take that phone. That's she crying. Two days later, daddy, <laughs> I'm being a good girl. I'm being a heathen. <laughs> Yo, oh, man, they can't survive without the phone. Yeah, that phone is ill, big. I don't know if we're doing good or bad Word. with that, but we caught up in it, too. Yeah, absolutely. That's the man. whole this thing. This is ill. These joints, be, that's I'm, my business. Yeah. Right Everything I do I'm is I'm trying to tell phone. my daughter, put your phone down, but I'm looking at my phone. I'm like, yo, put yeah. your phone down. Yeah. I just be like, what are you talking about? Like, you ain't getting no money. What are you talking about? Teenage <laughs> stuff. I mean, my daughter's 16. They talking about boys. Yeah. And they talking about clothes, <gasps> and they talking about what clothes the boy had on and they talking about who's the ugly boy yeah. and what boy yeah. likes you yeah. and, and they know them like so, you they know so, them so I wish she knew her books like she know them exactly. songs boy we about to jump to another vid right now what we got lined up Okay. All right, so we're going to jump into this freestyle. Um, yeah. Introduce that real quick. Yeah, this is a, a million of freestyle I did for my boy Funk Flex mm -hmm. over old Jay-Z beat, mm -hmm. produced by, um, directed by my homegirl Jenny Alvarez and my boy Dominican Drew over at Hot 97 had his hands in this. His little uh, production team helped put this together. That's Big shouts to Dominican Drew. Everybody at Hot 9, check there it out. There you go. Check out the vid. Live Hip Hop Daily. 